Hi everyone. In this video lecture, we'll understand how we can simulate sequential circuits in LTSpice. As an example, we'll simulate a D flip flop. Here on your screen, the schematic of a D flip flop is shown. Now, D flip flops are also called as delay flip flops because they transfer data from the input to the output on every clock. As you can see, this is a negative edge triggered D flip flop with active low reset. To simulate a D flip flop, we'll need a D flip flop component and three voltage sources for data, clock, and reset pins. So let's go to the LT SPI simulator. Open LT Spice and create a new schematic. Click on Add Component. Go to the Digital Logic Library, where you'll see three different D flip flop components. Let's go through each of these components. DFF is a D flip flop without reset or set pin. DFF underscore R is a D flip flop with reset pin. And lastly, you'll find DFF underscore RS, which is a D flip flop with reset and set pins. Now for this schematic, we'll select the DFF underscore R component as we want to create a D flip flop with a reset pin. Click OK and add the component to your schematic. We'll extend each terminal of the D flip flop and connect label to it depending upon its behavior. For a D input, we'll connect the D input label. Similarly, we'll do it for clock and reset. On the output side, we'll connect two output labels to Q and Q bar. Three. Now to see flip-flop, we'll need three voltage sources. We'll click on add component, search for voltage and click OK. We'll add three voltage sources V1, V2 and V3. We'll also connect ground to the negative terminal of every voltage source. Extend the positive terminal of all the voltage sources and we'll connect by adding the appropriate labels. We'll add the clock label to the V1 source, the data label to the V2 source, and finally, we'll add the reset label to V3. V1 is our clock source. It's going to be a pulse source with periodic waveform. Let's right click on V1, click on advance, click on V pulse, and set the parameters as follows. V initial we'll set as zero volts. V on we'll set as five volts. TD I'm going to go with one millisecond. TR we'll set it as one nanosecond. Same for TF we'll set TF as one nanosecond. T on like TD we'll set it as one millisecond and T period will set it as two milliseconds, two millisecond. Now click OK. Now this configuration will generate a clock signal which has a period of two milliseconds. Now right click on V2 source. Again, click on advance, click on pulse. We're going to configure data so that it stays high for four milliseconds and then goes low for six milliseconds after that. So keeping that in mind, our configuration parameters will be, so set V initial as zero volts, V on will go for five volts, TD as one nanosecond, TR will take as one nanosecond, TF will go for the same one nanosecond, T on will set it as four millisecond, and the time period will set it as 10 millisecond. With that done, OK. Now right click on the V3 voltage source. 
V3 is connected to the reset pin, which is active low reset pin. So we'll set the reset pin as logic high, which is not reset condition. To do that, give DC value as 5 volts and then click OK. So we are done with configuring the schematic. Now click on Run. LT Spice will ask you how long you want to run the simulation. We'll go with 10 milliseconds and click OK. This will open the waveform window. We are interested in three signals, data, clock, and queue. Click on each of them. Create three different plots and drag each waveform into each plot. As you can see in the waveform, at every negative edge of the clock, data gets copied from the input D to the output pin Q. You can observe all the negative edges of the clock signal and validate the respective output. So this is how we simulate a sequential digital circuit in LT Spice. A similar simulation approach can be used for simulating counters, shift registers, or timers. Thank you.